iHeartRadio Broadway, driven by Mercedes-Benz. Colin, Patty, thank you so much for joining iHeartRadio Broadway today. Thanks for having us. So first and foremost, congratulations. You have a new album coming out on November 18th. You've got a second baby on the way and all these other amazing projects. So first and foremost, congrats. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Yeah. It's a very exciting month. Yes. <laughs> so let's dive in. This album is called Something Stupid. I'm curious how the album came to be. You've worked together before. This is your first joint album. But how did this album come to be? Uh, well, right before, um, well, during the pandemic, uh, Robbie Rizel reached out to Patty and asked us if we uh, would be interested in making an album. And we, of course, said yes. And it's something that we would talked about doing for a long time and uh, just had never found the right time to do it. And when so when he reached out, we jumped on the opportunity and, <laughs> and we started uh, uh, the tod the, the sick toddler at home. Hey, Bubba. <laughs> She's eating right, a bagel. of course. Uh, so, yeah, take um, it away. so we we had actually um, already purchased a sound booth for our home because I was recording a lot more audiobooks and Colin was recording an album um, with a good friend of ours, Brian Yusufer, that he had released. And so we had the setup. We everything was here. So even though things were still in lockdown and in and out, and people, you know, Broadway wasn't up and running again, and um, we could, it was honestly sort of easy in that way it was convenient in that way that we just had to kind of go downstairs and do the stuff do and, our part yeah. yeah and it was great i mean you know uh we we all zoomed together to figure out what the album might be and robbie had some amazing suggestions for song choices and really was on board for making it as eclectic as possible eclectic is the word it's definitely <laughs> it has something for everything from like your teenager to you know your grandfather <laughs> and i think i think that's the the lovely surprise about this album the album's absolutely gorgeous from top to bottom but i think everyone kind of expects the two of you to put a musical theater album together Together. And there are beautiful musical theater moments, 100%. But you have Springsteen and Jason Robert Brown and Paul Simon. Like you have this beautiful arrangement of everything. So I'm curious, and I'm, I always find it fascinating when I'm talking to someone for a new album. How do you put it together? How do you make those hard choices that you keep these numbers, but you're going to cut five more? So how do you go about planning that process? It was sort of like a March Madness uh, bracket. No, <laughs> that's but, a good idea. But though. not a bad idea. Next time we might have to making. do that. <laughs> uh, no, you know we, you know we put together a master list of any and all possibilities that we could dream up of doing, and you know my sensibilities sort of tended towards the more rock and roll side of things, uh, and Patty is like an encyclopedia of musical theater, which is amazing. But you know, <laughs> and so we we really tried to find a fun middle ground where we could meet up in some places and then you know do the honor of of singing some some musical theater like a lot of people know us for but then really just doing numbers that we love and whether it was whether it was traditional musical theater or whether it was rock and roll we just sort of threw everything at the wall and we're, we're like all right we love this why don't we do this yeah it was sort of and also things that we had always wanted to sing like i'd always wanted to sing that a lark but that's that's a beast of a song and so it's not <laughs> it something is. that you're like i'm gonna put this in my concert you know because that's <laughs> Then every, I mean, with me and my anxiety, then the whole concert would just be about like, did I do Metal Arc right? <laughs> but because recording an album is sort of like, it's almost like, you know, the 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 film and TV of, of, of stuff because you can do it a few times. You can really sort of get the take that you want. And, um, and so, and, and so I, I was like, you know what, let's, this seems to be the time to do it, to sort of check that off the list. Um, and think, Robbie also had some ideas that were, you know, we would never have thought of at all. Right. So it was really and very I, collaborative. And I think with Metal Arc, what I love so much about it is there's this kind of folksy vibe to it that we haven't heard for a while. And I think that string section that comes into Metal Arc with this, that you kind of hear throughout the other songs is very cool. So I'm curious how the orchestrations came about because these are very fascinating orchestrations for these numbers. Yeah, it's a huge credit to both uh, Luke, our- Luke our, Williams, Luke yeah. Williams, our arranger, and Yaz, our co-producer. They just put together such cool ideas and Luke had Luke and Robbie and Yaz really worked together to to Milo. make um, 
Each song just a little bit different. We're talking to our dog, of course. Yeah, Milo's trying doing to eat something. Cecily's bagel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you keep talking. I'm just going to keep talking while Patty goes and deals with that. Uh, you know, they they wanted to add little, you know, surprises for the listeners as they went along. And, um, you know, when it came time to doing the song from Tangled, Luke had one idea for the arrangement and we we listened to his idea it was great and i said well what if we just did it on like a it was almost like a you know folksy guitar thing mm -hmm. and i you know sat down on a zoom and played a bad version of what he ended up coming up with um but that's how the whole thing really came around like it was so collaborative like patty said and it was it was such a give and take and there was no mm -hmm. moment of like i hate this let's do it different they were so wonderful to work with and made it really easy to come to a you know conclusion that we are all really happy with yeah and also if you know i'm sure you you've listened through there's like there are little easter eggs and through lines throughout that we didn't even know we're going to show up until we heard the album we're <laughs> yeah. like oh my god like so they really did so much of that work on their side of it you know and again it's sort of it's sort of like when you put up a show it's like the actors are the last thing to come in the singers are literally the last la you know like we come and we do some recordings and then they do all of the work to make it sound truly phenomenal and special and unique to us and and because we are a broadway station i do have to bring up some of the musical theater moments on the album and especially yes, patty with, which are mostly with, mine <laughs> <laughs> with everything changes i mean that is such yeah. a special song from waitress but as a mom you're going to be a, a mom of two soon how special yeah. was that song for you to record <laughs> it was pretty great because you know I, I love that show and never i say this all the time everybody sings she used to be mine which is a gorgeous song but I think Everything Changes is one of the most powerful songs from the show because it's so hopeful and it's so, you know, and it's it's true. Like the, the opening lines, today's a day like any other, but I'm changed, I'm a mother. It literally happens in a, in a second, you know? And Sarah Bareilles just captured that so perfectly somehow. Um, and already having Cecily, our daughter, you know, singing it, it was like perfect. And then now listening to it again, it's like, oh gosh, it's happening again because our second one is a girl as well. And so, oh, congratulations. <laughs> thank you thank very you. much. Thank you. <laughs> and and Colin, I know you do have some of the more rock contemporary stuff on the album, but you do <laughs> bring in the Sondheim factor with this. And how important was that to have on this album for you? I mean, look, I I adore Stephen Sondheim and uh, I think it's something that I, you, I don't want <laughs> I don't want to sound weird, but I think sometimes people forget that I've lived in that world a bit. Mm -hmm. uh, and so when um, when Robbie suggested finishing the hat, I I was I was so excited to be able to do it because I love that show. I think his music is so. I mean, everybody's everybody's said a million things about it. I'm not going to add anything new to the <laughs> to the odes. But I, I just love it. And so, um, you know, it was just special with him passing and being able to revisit that that music again I, with loose arrangements. I, it was just awesome. I don't know. I, I sound like a bumbling idiot, I think. But nah. It was really special. No. It's always amazing to me how many people don't realize that Colin can sing because <laughs> so many of him know him from TV at this point. That they don't, you know, not everybody does a deep dive into Google and looks at Wikipedia and is like, oh, he was on Broadway. And like, oh, look at that. But like people are shocked and they're like that's literally where he started like that's his that's his like baseline talent right. you know and so so that's that's always exciting for people to to just like be so surprised by him and what he can do and i'm like i know <laughs> <laughs> And I and the last song on the album is something stupid, but I'm curious why that was the name of the album. Why it was important for that to be the name? <laughs> well, because that's sort of sort of our sense of humor, and you know, we were sort of Robbie was throwing out names of you know, you sort of uh, first sort of go with like lyrics or titles of the songs, and it was like I will follow the I see the light, and then he was like we could always call it something stupid, and I was like oh well Bing. now we have to. <laughs> I was like that's just that's literally just sort of how we generally live our life is like everything is weighed how important it is and it's all it's all just kind of something stupid you know um and it just i don't know it just fit it just it was fit. something really like i don't know just it felt 
silly mm -hmm. and fun and i think people are going to look at it and go huh which yes. is perfect which is great because yeah. when you look at the track listing i think a lot of people will go huh <laughs> <laughs> it's not sappy and it's not you know there's yeah. nothing like overly sentimental about it it's just like eh, it's just something stupid <laughs> <laughs> but I think that's also a testament to the two of you. I think it fits your personality. I've interviewed you a couple of times on red carpets and events. And I think this album, the songs that were chosen for it, the name of the album, I think it fits the two of you very well. Yes, well, this is the most true. This yes. is the most true. <laughs> <laughs> we always like to make sure there's a little bit of lightness and humor in everything we do. Um, that's a lot easier for me than than for him because he tends to do the darker stuff. Um, <laughs> but, you know, it's it's at the end of the day, we're just kind of silly and yes. you know just sort of fun loving people and with the toddler running around in the back it's totally totally the normal thing she's doing laps this is what she does she just uh yeah. she's she's homesick from school but yet she finds the energy for laps um and she's smiling she's just singing to herself and yeah it's like this, it's like this it's like the zoomies it's totally great it literally, it literally is. And she thinks she's running away from the dog because she has a piece of food in her hand. And so that's why she's giggling. And But the dog is just kind of looking at her like, what are you doing? Like, yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, man. Also, yeah. <laughs> uh, get ready for two. That's all I will say. <laughs> yep. Oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, man. I figure people have three and four and five and 19. And so I'm like, I think we can handle two. We can handle We're two. smart people. Cut to I know. nine months from now, and we're like, excuse me. <laughs> I'll, I'll plan the follow up interview for when the next child yes. arrives. Yeah, exactly. Oh my gosh. It's literally just going to be a blank screen, and you're just going to hear like someone move and be like, what? I'm so sorry. I didn't hear it. And just babies. There's like, going to yeah. be a lot more gray in my beard by then. <laughs> well, That's why I went back to blonde. <laughs> Before I let you go, I also want to touch on some of your other projects. I know you both moved with the family to Australia because you have a new series coming out on Peacock, Colin. Can you tell us a little bit I about do. the new series? Yeah, so uh, it's going to drop on November 30th onto Peacock. And it actually put a little bit of a, uh, a break in the making of the album because we had all this um, this headway being made and we'd chosen the songs and Luke was getting worked, uh, getting to work on the arrangements and everything. And then all of a sudden we we're like, bye, we're going to go to the other side of the planet. Um, but it's a wonderful show. It's a it's a dark comedy um, about a guy from Chicago who is a criminal who ends up having to go on the run and ends up in Australia impersonating a reverend in a very tiny little beach town in the far north of Queensland. Uh, and it's it's really fun. We had a great time over in Australia and I was very lucky to be able to have Patty and Cecily with me for most of the time that we were shooting. Um, and I, I'm really looking forward to everybody seeing it. It's gonna be really exciting. The trailer looks super dark and creepy and very fascinating. So um, it's a, a divergent from the, the other roles you've played. So that's kind of fun. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's, it, 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 there, is, there is a really fun, like sort of action thrillery side to it. And then there's a lot of um, sort of off the wall, absurd comedy in there as well, which I'm, I'm excited. It is very different than, than the stuff I've previously done on television. He gets to be funny. I get to be funny. And Patty funny. has seen most I've seen of this. I've seen six of the 10. I'm trying not to rush to, you know what I mean? I'm trying not to sit and binge. I feel like I just like watching one or two at a time. And so, but it's really, it's so, it's so great. And it looks beautiful. And even though we spent all that time there, I watch it and I'm like, I cannot believe that that place exists. Yeah. Um, the entire cast is phenomenal. It's just, I mean, just truly phenomenal. Um, and so I think that it's the kind of show that, you know, it's, it's again, it sort of has something for everyone because it really has those really colorful characters, but yeah. then it has a more serious dramatic element to it. And so I'm going to let Patty do my, oh. <laughs> uh, all my press for the rest of the show. It's great. <laughs> Or I'm just gonna steal everything she says and like just implant it into my next interview. Go for it. This. Go for it. Just create. You should create cue cards. It's just everything Patty yes. says on cue cards. That's what if we just it. like paint a little beard on her and put a wig on? That would be Do you terrifying. Think it'll... No, <laughs> done, I think Cecily would cry. <laughs> and Patty, on the polar opposite end of the spectrum, yes! also in a new Hallmark movie called In Merry Measure. Can you tell us a little bit about the new movie? Yes, in Merry Measure, I got to go to uh, Vancouver, Canada to 
film it in August of this year. Um, and it's just, it is, I love Hallmark Christmas movies. This is my second Christmas movie, my fourth Hallmark movie. Um, but it's about a former pop star who ends up going back to her hometown of Dayton, Ohio for Christmas to, to visit her sister and her niece. And of course, you know, as fate happens, she ends up coaching her old high school's um, choir for the the Christmas Carol competition, and she ends up co co coaching it with her former high school rival, who happens to be you know a, a handsome man, um, and we all know how that goes. And so it's great. I love it because um, it has a little bit of like a sister act two element to it with the high school mm -hmm. choir and you know like prepping and getting ready to compete and um, and I get to sing in it. I get to sing a little bit, which was really really fun. But it was just like oh, it was such a great experience. I, I had such a good time working with the cast but also the crew was literally 50% female. And that was a, amazing. It was amazing. Like it was just, I, I, it just felt so good and relaxed. And our director, Paula L, she just, her, the set that she ran was just so, um, just so fun, you know, and, and really, and they do those fast. They do those in 15 shooting days, which mm -hmm. is not easy, no matter how many times, how many of these movies that come out, it is still a challenge for, for, you know, a team to figure out how to do that. And Paula just did it with such grace. Um, and it was just a really fun sort of, you know, shout out of a canon experience. And we got to, to watch it and it's, it's, it's really, it's really great. It's I'm really super proud cute. of it. <laughs> that is amazing. And it. it's fun to see her singing on screen, which doesn't happen very often. No, not unless I'm wearing a costume and on a morning show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the music in it is really great. I mean, there is some Christmas music, but then they had some composers writing uh, and songwriters writing for the show mm -hmm. and that Patty included in her 54 below show. Uh, one of the songs. Yes, that... the song "Peace of Mind." That there's only there's a snippet of it in the in the movie a couple of times. But um, I asked the songwriter Amanda Harufe if it was okay if I sang it at my concert, and she said, "Of course." And so, and it, it's just it's such a beautiful song. I put a, a whole clip of it up on my Instagram as well. Um, and I, I just I just love it. It's just you know singing sort of those different kinds of things. It's going to be playing on Hallmark for the whole month of December, and I'm sure you can get it on demand yeah. as well. Yes, yes I, think, I think it's also on Peacock, I believe, which is what oh. Colin's show is going to be on. So if you just get Peacock, you can, you can have see the us. whole Mir and Donald family. All of it. Congratulations to the two of you, and thank you so much for joining me today. Oh, thank, thank you. you. You're always such a pleasure to talk to. Thank you so much, and I I hope the baby feels better. And congrats again. Thanks. So far, so good. She was <laughs> she was good for you. So. <laughs> 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 Perfect. We'll talk soon and good luck with everything. All right. Thank, thank you. you. iHeartRadio Broadway, driven by Mercedes Benz.